Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah. Are you having a nice evening? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, my name is Gareth. Say hello, Gareth. Hello, hello everybody. <laughs> I, um, I've been doing some research recently, and Gareth, um, Gareth is an ancient Welsh name that means man with shit name. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm going to put that over there. Um, brilliant. So um, um, I've come from Bournemouth to be here today. <laughs> Is there anyone in from Bournemouth? <laughs> I live in Bournemouth with my wife. I'm married. Give me a cheer if you're married. <laughs> Give me a cheer if you're single. <laughs> Much happier. Much <laughs> Much happier. I've been married. Um, I've been married eight years, so I married quite young. Um, people say to me, "Her oh, married young, did you? Her oh, was she pregnant? Oh, was she pregnant?" And I'm like, "No." As it turned out. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty shock and lovely surprise. That was all at the same time. So um, I got the train here. Anyone been on the train recently? <laughs> oh, it's good on the train now. They've got, um, they've got plug sockets on the train now. Have you seen this? Plug sockets on the train. It's like living in the future. <laughs> How do they get electricity on a train? With their hand in the back with an extension lead going... <laughs> get me another one! <laughs> and, and, and by the plug socket, there's a sticker to give us some instructions. Because they know if they don't give us some instructions, we'll just freak out. <laughs> It says laptops and mobile phones only, and I'm always like, oh, and I've brought my ironing. <laughs> when was I supposed to get this done? <laughs> right, you watch out for the man for me, and I'm just going to get as much of this done as I can before he gets. <laughs> Wait, sorry, this is still a bit damp. Sorry, do you mind if I plug my tumble dryer in there? Is that... <laughs> I went to Wimbledon last year. I went to Wimbledon and this young guy came up to me and he said, I'm a ball boy. I said, oh, I'm of a breast man myself. <laughs> wooden spoons are handy because you can use wooden spoons to prepare food. Or if you haven't got time for that, just write a number on one, go into a pub and say, where's my dinner? <laughs> I ordered hours ago. So we're political people here on the um, on Russell Howard's Good News. Um, how do we feel about the coalition? <laughs> That's the exact sound everyone makes all over the country. That's the sound of our political opinions. <laughs> <laughs> people thought the Conservatives were going to win really easily in the last election, and I think I think they should have rebranded themselves more, and they would have done better because they've had to do this sharing thing. And, you know, because um, they, they should have rebranded more, because some people call them the Conservatives, some people call them the Tories. I think they should call themselves the Conservatories. <laughs> Making the Houses of Parliament more transparent. <laughs> One of the first things they said they were going to do was cut down on speed cameras. How do we feel about that? Cut down on speed cameras. Good news for motorists, not so good for school children. <laughs> then we do want to save money on education, so... <laughs> I live near my parents in Bournemouth, and um, mums are lovely, but they are a bit embarrassing, aren't they? I think, um, I think there's something about happens to a woman when they have another human being burst out of them one day. <laughs> just makes them lose all sense of what's normal and appropriate in everyday life for the rest of their life. The other day, my mum wanted to mime to me, Gareth, would you like a glass of wine? This is the mime she did. She says, Gareth, would you like her? <laughs> I'm like, mum, that is not the mime for would you like a drink. <laughs> Not much of a drink, anyway. <laughs> but there's reasons why people do comedy. Something's had to have gone wrong somewhere in your life you to need this sort of attention. And one of these moments for me is I was 10 years old and it was bath time and my mum and my auntie were there. 
And I start to get... Th this isn't as bad as it sounds like it's going to be. There's <laughs> social workers in the front row who are worried. And I start to get changed. And I throw them a look as if to say, yeah, you can go now. And my mum says, oh, come on, we should go now. He doesn't like me to see him get changed anymore. Now he's growing up a little bit. He's shy of himself. Now he's getting a little bit older. We should give him his privacy. We should go. And this next bit of the conversation, this, they were still in the room when they had this conversation. This is in my mind for me to deal with for the rest of my life. <laughs> my mum says, we should go. And my auntie says, oh, why? Has it grown? <laughs> And my, and my mum said, no. <laughs> Part of me died right there and then. <laughs> but, you know, your parents worry about you, and that's a lovely thing. But every now and then they say something that betrays how much they worry about you, the terrible things that go through their minds. Every time my mum used to take a picture of me, she used to say, smile, Gareth. Because if you go missing tomorrow, this will have to be on the news. <laughs> Nobody's going to look for a miserable child. <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> I hated school. I hated school all the way through. I hated it. We had communal showers at our school. Do you have communal showers at your school? No. No, they stopped doing it because it's very cruel. <laughs> When you're right on the brink of puberty, the most self-conscious you'll ever be about your body, and they make you shower in front of your whole class. <laughs> I'd like to shower with 30 12-year-olds now and see who the weirdo is. <laughs> My English teacher hated me when I was at school. He's always like, Gareth, you'll never amount to anything. You'll never do anything with your life. And I said to him, mark my words. That's your job. <laughs> um, I, um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm moody, I'm a bit melancholic. I, um, sometimes, sometimes I feel alone in the universe, like a tiny speck of nothing in an ocean of emptiness. And then I'll have a cup of... <laughs> thank you. And then I'll have a cup of tea and a Kit Kat and just feel much better. <laughs> just low blood sugar. <laughs> That's all it was. I thought I was deep, I was just peckish. And I was a morbid kid. I remember I got into trouble once at school for saying to my RE teacher, I said, all right then, if heaven's so brilliant, why don't we all just kill ourselves and go there? <laughs> right, now, if a 10-year-old boy said that to you, would that encourage you to take your own life? <laughs> no, she must have been on the brink anyway. <laughs> So I suppose the big news um, in, in my life is um, two years ago, my wife and I had a little boy. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> he's, um, he's, he's a good one. <laughs> yeah, no, we're pleased with him, definitely. You know? you know when you get something new, you compare it to the ones other people have got? <laughs> well, there's some freaky-looking babies out there. <laughs> but he's a good one. We're going to keep him, definitely. <laughs> He's by far the best thing that's ever happened as a result of one of my bodily functions. <laughs> His name's Ethan. Ethan Richards, not a bad name. If we had a girl, I wanted to call her Adele. You know, after um, my laptop. <laughs> I realised I'd, I'd had a negative attitude about, um, about babies, about children, you know. I'd, I've been prejudiced against children, is the truth of it. People worry about all sorts of things nowadays. People worry about asylum seekers and immigrants, things like that. I don't worry about that. I think that's a load of racist nonsense. I think, what about babies? <laughs> you know, they come here, they don't speak the language. <laughs> Start claiming benefits as soon as they get here. <laughs> they won't wear the same clothes or eat the same food as us, so they have to have their own special shops. <laughs> Also, we let as many of them in here as they want. As soon as we try and get where they came from, very strict border controls in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'd end with a song. How do you feel about that?
put a special bit of tape for me to know exactly how low to put the mic stand. <laughs> so if anyone's worried about, is that mic stand high enough? <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Omnichord. <laughs> yeah. Omni means really, chord means brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to show you what this baby can do. <laughs> the Omni chord is a three-pronged attack on music. The first thing it does is the beat. The second thing it does is the chord sound. <laughs> hey? <laughs> now, there's one more thing this baby does. Are you ready for this? <laughs> this metallic strip here makes a harp sound. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> My friend Dave is a little bit square, just like a fridge. <laughs> My friend Dave hasn't got any hair, just like a fridge. <laughs> doesn't listen to what you say He likes to pretend that everything's okay And Dave keeps things the same way every day Just like a fridge <laughs> Just like a fridge My friend Dave is white Just like a fridge <laughs> Dave doesn't wash, so he gently hums, just like a fridge. <laughs> His light comes on when you open the door. You can only use Dave for what Dave is for. And Dave at a party is a bit of a bore. Just like a fridge. <laughs> just like a fridge. My friend Dave is cold inside, just like a fridge. <laughs> but he's warm if you touch him on the back, just like a fridge. <laughs> Dave's dad is called Eric and his mum is Joanne. Whilst travelling in East Asia, their romance began. And that's how come Dave was made in Japan, <laughs> just like a fridge. <laughs> Just like a fridge. We thought that Dave would always be alone, just like a fridge. Cos Dave is not very good at talking to girls, just like a fridge. But then he found someone to call his own. We finally met her when he brought her home, but she couldn't quite fit into the living room. She was massive, <laughs> just like a fridge, <laughs> just like a fridge, just like a fridge. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been lovely. I'll be glad to you. See you later. Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gareth Richards!